Thank you. <laughs> so this first poem is one that I wrote very shortly into my transition when I was in mainland China of all places. Mostly it was like a monetary logistic thing because poverty and I was already there. So it was like, I guess I got to do it here. So it's called, If You Think About a Diamond. If you think about a diamond, one of the most precious of stones, with all its facets, it seems no one can know the true depths of its soul. So akin are we to be mysterious to ourselves, always looking, questioning, surprising. Akin to a diamond going through insurmountable pressure to form, so I have continue in being pressed, being reborn. The tale starts at seven. Or was it eight? Perhaps at four in my grandparents' daycare when wearing a dress I identified as my fate, but stopped myself before it was too late. Or perhaps the time I was 12 on the bus pretending to be one of us, but I digress. The only thing I know is that I deceived myself so well for so long that I had the whole world playing along. I hid behind games with virtual arenas, tried sports, and cursing and farting verbatim. I used my A to the DHD to distract myself from me, and then eventually my sex engine started, you see. Her name was with a T that I will not name, and she looked like a beautiful boy with long, dark brown hair. On the other side of the gym she was, and then I started to have a buzz, a buzz of desire, of emotion, of fire, my first crush and the buzz kept working. My attraction was deep, a little too deep to be something of normal course. I wanted her long flowing hair, her smaller figure, and it began to throw me in despair. How could I want to be with this girl and want to be her? I remember Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde that had me thinking boys turned into girls and had me wishing. And so this built this buzz until masturbation was. And then things increased with confusion as I began to suffer from delusions of secret fantasies of an alternate life, all the while coming to the Lord and punishing myself. I had the darkest thoughts in the deepest cave in the sea and decidedly pursued to keep myself busy. I raised 120,000 for a skate park and music was one of my keys to keep on being me and through stage and performance, I discovered a new persona that could withstand the world and hide myself well. The pain inside never subsided, however, and grew to immense pressure like Fukushima under the attacks of Mother Nature not having a way to release. I tried counselors galore. Mommy, daddy issues, check. Abandonment issues, check. Why isn't this working? What could it be? Learning to meditate and channel my energy, check. Yet the pressure rises and I can't deny it. Taking care of myself, check. Finding myself as an artist, check. No, 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 it can't be that, it can't be. Solidifying my character and knowing where I stand, check. I can't accept this, there has to be a way out. An opening to teach in China that led into an empty hollowing out of my being to help motivate. I'm dying inside and I don't think I can still hide. Now my health has digressed and after some rest I returned broken, battered and barely alive picking up the pieces of something I contrived, a falsity and one telling of my state, but then hiding another eight months until it was almost too late. Saved only by love, unable to love. Able to love myself because of another. Able to love myself because of embracing who I was, am and always will be. Able to love myself because of friends and family the like who love me for making their lives bright. Able to love myself because now I feel whole and not splintered, wearing a mask that breaks over time. Able to love myself because I am worth it and love love. So now I am here, still on my journey, and I apologize that 23 years took so long to express, but I have an insurmountable task to keep loving myself and not surviving, but thriving in the pressure come so far, and the pressure is great, but like a diamond, I'm worth the wait.
Will and Mangum. Thank you. I'm 28 now. Still struggling with some things. Four years old was when it started. And nine is whenever I had a traumatic event that I'm still learning to heal from and using today and tomorrow as some space with other lovely trans folk to heal. And that leads me into the next poem. It's called Waiting. Waiting. Always ready. Always seeking. Always yearning. Waiting for connection that we all deserve. Waiting for someone to see me as me and desire me all in one. So I put myself out into the verse. From the online dance to the queer spaces of mirth, I get looks of interest. Conversations emerge and a connection begins. Slowly fanning the flames with my new shift smile, gestures, and feminine wiles, I begin to foster a hope inside but try to control the growth, a fear of losing control and snuffing out this flame with exuberance for possibilities. So I breathe, smile, and I wait, wondering if this is fate or just another face. Connection seems to lock in my despair, needing to be quenched, latches onto the hope of this interaction, seeping in doubt and making me falter for a beat. But I recover, push it back, push it back, push it back. Not this time, not this one, not this girl, this Connection is genuine and she won't turn. But baby steps, don't rush the field. Don't let her see your brokenness. So we continue exchanging laughter-filled quips, and I begin to wonder if I should go all in. Moment of truth. I tell her I'm trans. You're funny, I tinge. Wow, I couldn't tell. I sigh. You're so gorgeous, the fear builds up inside. I like you, but I have a partner, and I begin to drown in despair. I don't do dating. I slowly nod and wince a smile, trying to keep the years of shame and me trying to hide, hide myself from myself, hide myself from the world, hide myself from feeling worthy of love. So I move on and wipe it off. But this happens again. And again, 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 until it feels like there's no end. That physical connection with another woman I like is fleeting because their expectations aren't met. Re reinforcing my deep shame and hate for the way I was made. Digging out countless nights of a chest so heavy that I feel crushed by the weight of crying and screaming in my hands, cursing my fate to try and change it, fearing abandonment which had become a norm from a childhood born and not feeling beautiful, allowed to feel good or worthy of love. But I gave face, quickly cracking as each breath escapes the cave of my shame, seeping onto my mask. So I leave and I cry myself to sleep as my body aches, aches for this just to stop aches for me to finally feel at home in my own body, aches for someone to love me as me, aches for expectations to be met, the aches increase and I begin to lose breath, crying violently like a quake, unsettling the dead, not able to find connection or love, the darkness comes out and I long for this to end, I long for a way out which I can't seem to see, I long for a way to set myself free, yet these thoughts won't leave. Maybe they're right, maybe I don't deserve life. So I envisioned my nine-year-old self when all this shame began. And I see her, scared and alone, feeling without a home. And I approach her, and I kneel. And I tell her it'll be all right. That I'm here and I love her. And that I will never leave. So we embrace and I try to calm her with the mantra. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to be loved. You are beautiful. Trans is beautiful. I 
and we smile. And she goes away for a while. Always there, usually scared, but fine for now. So I guess I'll keep on waiting somehow. Waiting for someone who just sees me. That isn't hung up on social normalcy, that isn't taken and in a place to try, try to be vulnerable and connect. So I'll keep waiting. But maybe I'm just waiting for me. Thank you.